we're gonna get right into it. 155% increase in conversion, which is a 330% layoff. 54%, and this is across the entire business, 96% relative increase. Leads flowing into the call center is 638%. I've spent 30 years of my life and ran 20,000 plus experiments to understand the answer to a single question. Why do people say yes? Like, share, subscribe, and uh, help us build a great community of evidence-based marketers. Okay, everyone, it's good to see you again. Um, and I see Dave Fogel's back and uh, some new faces. Sean, good to see you. Don's you're in Bend, Oregon, I see, but I recognize your name. I know I've seen you on, uh, I think I've seen you before here. And uh, I see someone just joined us from Bogota, Colombia. Philippe, we're glad to have you. You should be able to pay attention to the chat as it unfolds around us. And I'd like to show you a case study to introduce the live op. If you're new, pay attention, especially to the question I'm going to raise right now. Here are three versions of the expression, the most important expression any marketer can ever make when it comes to communicating to a prospective customer, and that is the value proposition. So please look at T1, T2, and T3. All of these represent treatments. At the top of a page, a change in the first four inches of the page. And as you can see, if you look at the headlines, and then you look at the essence of the treatment described on the right-hand side of your page, they each take a different approach. One emphasizes that this 60-year-old company, uh, by the way, the company that invented the press release business, one emphasizes their authority in the industry. The second one emphasizes that they have the best network, that would be reporters and media. And finally, that they have the best customer service. Now, some of you have seen this, some of you have not. Tell me which one do you think will produce the highest conversion rate for the largest stochastic sample size of this organization. Go ahead very quickly. Is it one, is it two, or is it three? All right. Is it one, is it two, or three? Do we have any technical problems? Everyone following? I saw a couple of questions come in, just making certain. All right. And I see Arnold, Shannon Arnold says one. All right. And someone else says, uh, Sean says two. And uh, let's see what else we've got. Beth says two. Somebody else, give us a vote. I see a three, I see a two, all right, I see a one, all right, here we go. Dave, yes, we are live. Uh, so T1, T2, T3, you can see them all, and, uh, and uh, I've seen what you think. Now let me show you the result. By the way, before I bridge the gap right now, I'm going to take a piece of history and make it very present tense for you because this is historical in the sense that it's a case study. But all marketing is present tense. And if you don't understand that, you don't know how to use your history to affect the present tense or how to use the future promise to affect the present tense. But the moment marketing gets in the wrong tense, it loses its power. With that in mind, in the example I'm sharing with you, there existed a gap, and there exists right now for every single person joining. It's a gap in your mind with, uh, between what you need to know about the customer and what you actually know. If you knew all that you could or should know, you wouldn't need to tune in here. You wouldn't need to test. You would simply produce a product and it would instantly be purchased by the right customer group. Very few of us have that lucky experience. Indeed, we spend much of the early stages of our business learning what's in the mind of our customers, often the hard way, through complaints, through problems, uh, by missing sales targets, by struggling to get traction in our Facebook ads or our Google ads, in all the various ways we approach these customers, there uh, tends to be a significant gap. Now, we're gonna do live up in a few moments. If you've ever seen that, we're gonna take people's pages that I have not seen before, and we're going to work through them together, so pay close attention with me. This is the case study. That same gap existed right here, and the most important gap that exists in your mind is always about two things, the ontology of the customer and the value proposition that will resonate with them. When I say the ontology, I'm a philosopher, and I mean the being, the customer's uh, actuality, who they are. Because what they do flows out of who they are, and again, who they are connects so that what they do 
sometimes impacts who they are. And you're influencing that because ultimately you're doing this. You're searching for something, and I'm doing it off the top of my head. Let me see if I can. I'm writing in Greek, and I'm not trying to sound clever. I just love the word. And uh, this is a Greek word that represents what we often translate into English as a conversion. A metanoia is a, is a turning from one thing into another, from a prospect into a customer, from an unbeliever into a believer. You may not know this, but every day you're working on metanoia. And it's an ancient principle that goes back through thousands of years of literature and work, and it's at the heart of my research program for these past 30 years. If you're new, you need to see the case studies because we have thousands of them, and they're drawn from the research body. We spent $138 million on research to try and understand why people say yes to your value proposition. And for that reason, what we're going to focus on today as we look at live pages is this metanoia experience. What is it on the page that will produce a conversion? Now stop for just a second, go back to the case study, let's look at those three side by side. This gap existed in the mind. Often because I run a research lab, people think that my joy is in testing. No, testing is a necessary evil. Testing is only necessary where I have no other way to bridge the gap between what I need to know and, and what I actually know. So, in this case, with the CEO of this organization, big company, we had that challenge, and so we, we articulated our hypotheses, and then we crossed the divide. We, we built a bridge across the gap. We ran an, a split test, A, B, sequential. This was simultaneous, so a classic single factorial test in scientific design. And here's what we found. Now, that 21%, for the third treatment was a surprise for me. I would have voted differently. If you didn't get it right, that's because uh, it's hard to know. You can either get lucky, have mystical insights, or apply some good science to figure it out. Other than that, you're stuck with trial and error. And the problem with trial and error is it's success or failure. Good testing is not about success or failure. If you run a test, even if it doesn't get a lift, but you get a learning, that's a success. And the proper learnings will color in that dark spot that you have in the mind of the customer. You'll understand what's there and what matters. So you submitted your pages to us, and we're going to go through those pages. And, uh, and, and I want to help you as we do so, and let's even have fun as we do so, but let's make certain that we're very focused on metanoia, and we're, and we're using these pages to ask a critical question. We could ask many questions. We could critique them in many ways, but I'm going to focus on one single element, the most important element we have. And by the way, that element is something I did a YouTube live session on. Uh, you won't even, you'll have to go to the playlist to find it, but it's on the value proposition. And I'd recommend you get that if you haven't seen it. For now, I'm going to draw down to this and I'm going to do something else. Pull up the chart, would you? Um, and uh, get ready. I'm going to shift gears quickly to the to the actual pages that you submitted. But I, I'd like you to pull up the uh, chart that shows sort of our methodology. We taught through this in a series of sessions. And if you can just think about it for a moment, what you're looking at is what I've just described. Uh, and just go, you're confusing me over here. I just want the chart. The one you just had up, I don't know your customer mind. I'm talking to Paul off camera. Paul is drunk today, but he works, <laughs> he worked so hard yesterday that we're, we're letting him, we're letting him work anyway. So, uh, so I've got a PDF download for the model because of mine. Is that what you mean? No, I want the, yeah, I want the chart. You, you had it up. up. Yeah, yeah. Well, it went down. All right. Pull it up. Can, is it up now? All right. There's a delay too when he pulls it up. And plus he's stumbling on all over himself and, 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 and stuttering and so on. Some of you have been on here before. I've met Paul and he works with me every day on this. Look at the chart, how to create a model of your customer's mind. We're observing behavior, but we have a gap we don't understand. So we develop a hypothesis that can help us cross that gap. It, it, it helps us build the bridge. We apply it to a treatment, we test the hypothesis, but we do something that most people in their testing programs are not doing. We use the findings to go back and build out a robust customer theory, a predictive model of the customer's decision patterns. All right, with that in mind, 
I want to go to your pages. All right. And uh, T. Adobe calls you uh, Punch Drunk Paul. That's your that's your new name, Paul. All right. It, 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 <laughs> Dave wants to know if Drunk Paul is any different than Sober Paul. I don't know. I think he might be better because uh, Sober Paul has some serious issues. Um, here's the thing. When you work here and you put up with me, you have to drink. Either that or get therapy, one way or the other. All right. Now, I'm going to come back to this board. I'm going to wipe it clean a lot. I'm also going to say a couple of things about this. One, everything I'm teaching in this book, you've been hearing more about it. We don't release it to next year. We've been testing it for four years. We built 66 prototypes. But the, the, the work in here is behind the way we're going to see and think about this particular uh, live op session. All right, I'll erase my board and Paul, pull up the first page. Wait, but don't show it to him yet. Take it back down. All right. All right, Margaret, here we go. You've got 30 seconds. It should only take seven, but you're going to have 30 seconds to tell me the value proposition of this page. It was submitted this morning by someone who'd like help I hope you're on the call. If you are, you might want to speak up. I'm going to be direct and I'm warning everybody in advance. I'm going to become, in my mind, the prospective customer, which means I am no longer your friend. Forgive me for a second because marketer, I really am your friend. But to do this right, I have to do something every marketer must do to do their job well and that's get out of their skin and get into the customer skin. They've got to empty themselves. We rarely do this. The key to a transformed set of marketing results is a transformed marketer and it begins with learning how you yourself are probably your own worst enemy. And in fact, how that blind spot that grows from self-interest is interfering with you producing the highest and best results. Now, as you think about that with me, I'll show you a page, the timer will start, you have 30 seconds, and start typing in the value proposition as soon as you see it. Ready? Go. All right. The page should be coming up. Some of you, there may be a slight delay. The clock is ticking. And uh, I probably need a timer up here. Or Paul, you can be a timer. Just use your iPhone in time for us, okay? That was 15 seconds though. You only got 15 left. Oh, wait a second, Paul, I got a timer in front of me. Cliff's got one up for me. Cliff's in the control room. He's the executive producer of this program. Anyway, we're done. We're done, all right. <laughs> Dave says, what movement? Good call. Lead exam prep, That's is that a value prop? No, it's not. Unsure what the value prop is. That's not your fault. It's the marketer's fault. I have uh, questions about the page. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Dave said ball movement I, I, or bowel movement. I, I can't respond to that, Dave. Uh, but I can tell you this. What you're looking at is an epidemic. And it's all over the internet. And it may be that those of you joining us have the same problem with your pages. But let's begin by thinking through this page properly. And I want to say this to you over and over again. On the one hand, I'd be the customer. On the other hand, I am, you know, uh, Flynn at Mech Labs. And as that guy, I want to tell you, this is not about marketing. This is about the marketer. The key to understanding what went wrong with this page is not outside of the marketer. It's within the marketer. The marketer knows what movement to join. And they don't realize the prospective customer has no idea what they're talking about. The marketer might like that pretty color with leaves in the background. And they clearly know what that text is, that little white line of unreadable text underneath advanced the movement, they know what it is because they probably wrote it. But the marketer, in typical fashion, is falling prey to our natural blind spot. Not, not a bad thing, marketer, for you to experience this. It's a good way for you to learn and grow out of it. But every one of us need to do it together. And so, let's start with a page. The headline is join the movement. Headline has two goals, you all know it. Capture attention, convert it to interest. Does join the movement can capture your attention or convert it to interest? No. I don't want to join anything today. I hate joining things. Everywhere I go, they want me to join the country club. They want me to join their SaaS framework. I, I train, I work out, and you've heard about ketosis. And there's a, a lot of everybody's doing these diets around ketosis. Uh, it's a protein, limited protein, and a high-fat diet that produces a lot of results for athletes. I wanted to buy a meter to measure in my bloodstream ketones. And... When I did, I found that they wanted to charge me $200 a month to give me the reading. Sure, I could buy the meter for a couple of hundred dollars, but then I'm hooked $200 a month just to read the thing that I bought. Now, is that stupid or what? Just because the world is moving to recurring revenue doesn't mean you can justify dragging a customer through some experience like that that is absolutely unnecessary. Why am I tying that to this? Because if you don't see the offer 
through the eyes of the customer, you'll never get the traction you need unless you just get lucky. And joining the movement, they want me to join these guys and pay them $200. I'm not joining anything today. The first thing you make me do when I see this page is work. I don't want to work. And by the way, I'm looking for an answer. And I can't even tell if there's an answer on the page. Join the movement. And then what do I do underneath it? Here, again, please remember, marketer, I'm, I'm becoming the customer, the jaded customer that's the same way you are. You're, the, you're at your best in marketing when you're reading other people's stuff. Why? Because you become the customer and instantly you see this is stupid, why would I do that? That's nonsense. But when you become the marketer, you speak in a different language, you put hype on your pages and you talk to people like they're not human beings, like they're targets. So let me ask you a question. If I get past that, that three word, meaningless, useless, waste of space called join the movement, what do I do next? I see a new opportunity. I can advance the movement. Now, the only word in there that makes any sense is the word the, and I just know it needs to be there in order to make movement work grammatically. There's no reason why the word advance should be there. Advance what? How do I advance what? And again, you want me to work. And then you want me to advance the movement. What, I say this carefully because I'm cognizant of my audience and, and uh, uh, I want to be gracious and kind and polite, uh, but I'm going to say it anyway. What the hell are you talking about? Because I have no interest in your movement, I have an interest in a problem I've got to solve and that's the reason I came to this page and I want to solve the problem. Now if you keep looking underneath that, I can't read it. Uh, since, let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn from this string to this one, I have monitors everywhere. It's a little bigger, a little closer over here. I don't. And I'll tell you why. Paul said, do we open a browser so we can scroll? And then he fell out of his chair. Uh, he's climbing back in now. Uh, but no, I'm not going to scroll. All of our live ops are going to focus today on the top four inches. A broad live op session is going to help you. You've seen those before. But advance the movement. You're welcome to go to the URL and look yourself. And, uh, but look, all I want to do is see, is the top of this page doing its most important job, which is drawing me in to the communication of the value proposition. So it says, since 2007, GBS has been the number one provider of lead exam preparation and continuing education in the world. GBS is a proud education partner of the US GBC. Now, listen, uh, back to being myself, marketer, I know you probably represent a very good company here, and you've said some things there that are the basis for connecting with me. The problem is, I'll never read them. I'll start with that join, slip to the advanced movement quickly, and then drop to the boxes, because that's how the eyes work. Put this on a, on a heat sort of path, you know, device, and you'll see that what's going on here is my attention drawn there, and then you do something, uh, and then after you do it, you do something else, and both things are bad, but the second's even worse than the first. You say, what are you talking about? It sounds like a riddle. Sort of is. First of all, you, you, you put white text on a gray background, what makes it almost impossible to read, and I don't wanna work hard. I'm weary, I'm searching for options. I don't wanna work through that, and neither does the customer. And then, you put it in all caps, which makes it even harder to read. So now I've got it in all caps, I've got it in white, and, and then let's just keep going because it's not enough that you, that you made this hard for me. Now you put it in three equally weighted boxes and I don't know which box to watch. I don't know what the difference is between one, two, and three. Are those three different products? Are those uh, three different services? Are those uh, the same thing talked about in three different ways? What, what are they there for and why would I pay attention to them? Now, I want to show you the hermeneutical key to solving this page. But marketer, the reason you couldn't find the value proposition is because it's not there. Okay? And Juan, you're right. This page should have a very clear objective. We taught that when we taught the 21 psychological elements of, of, a, of a landing page. But right now, I found the hermeneutical key to solving for this page and getting a value proposition. And I'd like to see, look at the page, can anybody see any text anywhere with on just the top? Any text anywhere that will help you learn and use that uh, opportunity to expand the communication of the value proposition. Take a look, where's the text? Look for three or four words, that's all I'm looking for. And, uh, and Juan says he thinks the concept of the value proposition is you will pass the exam. But guys, I've taught on this before, so I'm gonna give you a one minute, I'm gonna give you a three minute refresher course on a value prop. 
It is the answer to this question, and it is an argument summarized with an ultimate reason. And that argument answers this sort of, uh, let's call it a counter question, because I start by saying, will you do X for me? And you say back to me, why should I do it? And then I give you a reason. And that reason better be compelling or it's game over. The question you have to look and answer, we're going to do this with every page, is if I'm the ideal customer, why would I purchase from you rather than, you could fill in the blanks, any other uh, vendor. You could be a supplier, you could be not purchasing at all, but any alternative action that diminishes your chances of creating a genuine relationship and building a, a customer, that's the options that you're losing people to. So, again, if I'm the ideal customer, why should I purchase from you rather than anyone else? We'll summarize it that way. And what do I see? Join the movement, advance the movement, a, a piece of text that's unreadable in three equally weighted boxes in white on gray and all caps. None of that, none of that is doing the work it should be doing. Okay? So, I'm looking to see if anybody found this, the magic words. All right, I see somebody said number one provider, but that's not credible. Show me how it's the number one provider. So, beneath that is the why. What is the why? And by the way, there's a why on the page. Where is the why? When you want somebody to believe you, you need to be certain that what you're saying is quantitative rather than qualitative. If it's qualitative, like you're a really good guy, have somebody else say it for you. If it's quantitative, it's more credible. And it takes a direct lie. That's why people tend to exaggerate but not directly lie on their pages. And whether they do or they don't, in test after test, when we see quantifiable information, we're much more likely to believe. Keep going. Keep going. Paul, I'm going to give you a homework assignment. If you get a moment, in my keynote on uh, the last keynote in Vegas, I had the scientific journal article where they use the image of the brain. You, you, you co-wrote that thing. I mean, you helped me build that. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah, if you can pull that up for me, I'm going to show them that study. This is on the fly, but you're really going to like this. It's about how to get people to believe. But while you're thinking about that, I see somebody finally gave me the text I'm looking for. Marcia, you win. All right. 130,000 clients. Now, there's another piece of text hidden up there. Since 2007. Now, wait a second. If you've helped 130,000 people and you've been in business since 2007, you're starting to give me the basis for a reason or an answer to that ultimate question. Now, if I had time, I would convert that into a headline. I'd love to get that's awesome that you got it. Paul just found the study that fast. And this is a thick academic journal article. This is uh, heavy, heavy reading. But uh, uh, I don't know if you have a chance to find the slide. I'd like to show them the, the, picture, the, the picture that was added. If not, I'll do without it. I can't do it without pulling it. All right. Leave it. Just leave it. I'll, I'll show you with this, okay? What I want you to understand, however, is that we now could probably recraft a headline that helps me understand why. But there's one thing we have to do before we tell them why. So at the top of every page we're going to look at today, I'm headed towards why. Why should I purchase from you rather than X, Y, Z? But to get to why, because why doesn't matter until I know what. Let's, 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 let's test that. I got a 25-year-old son um, taking courses at Harvard, and a 21-year-old son taking courses at Harvard, and a 16-year-old that says, uh, I'm sorry, a 21-year-old daughter, and a 16-year-old daughter that says she's going to Princeton, I think because the other ones went to Harvard. But if I were to say to my son, because if you don't, uh, you're not going to have the monies you need for college, if that's all I said, what would be missing in that statement? Well, I'm giving him a why, but he doesn't know what it is I want him to do. So we'll have those monies. So giving me your value prop without me knowing what it is you do is a waste of energy. But as soon as you can tell me, imply, or help communicate one way or the other what it is that I can do on this site, what your offer is, then the why matters. And in the top four inches of the page, don't hit me with these big images of green leaves in the background that mean nothing and hide the meaning, but rather explicitly spell out what you do and why you're the best answer to my, to my need. Does this make sense to everyone? By, by the way, somebody pointed out that first box. Who said that? Uh, I'm looking. Dave. See that unlimited access 
to our best, I think it may say best, I can't read in that, that stupid box, our number one selling exam prep tool for all the lead and well credentials. I, so, so do you understand that in that box is the beginning of their real headline? And then you add something like a subheader. Don't ever miss the power of a subheader. You don't have to say your value prop in your headline, but you need to indicate enough to get them to read it. And when all that space you got on the page, it should be explicit by then. And it's not. I hope this helped the person who submitted the page. I hope you don't hate me forever. I'm not trying to be hard on you, but when I become the customer, I, I cop their attitude, which is the only way you're going to be able to understand these pages. You do not see a landing page. Listen to me. You feel it. If you don't feel it, you, you can't feel the experience of the customer. If you can't feel the experience of the customer or the prospective customer, you'll never know how to target your, your, your wording, your messaging, and your offer. All right? Now, I'm going to take the what and the why down and we're gonna to go to a new page. Is this helpful? Tell me if you're finding this uh, interesting because I'm doing more teaching through LiveOp than normally and I'm wondering if you respond to this and if so, let me know, okay? Because we're, we're gonna coordinate our day that way. Now, I'm going to take you to a new one. Okay, all right, so we're not gonna look at any other part of the page. We're gonna focus just on the top part of the page and we have a page here doing the opposite of what the previous page did uh, but not necessarily in a good way. All right? So, I'm watching. Uh, thanks for the feedback. Uh, I'm watching you guys coming in. Good. Elena, you seem, you've, your name seems new. Uh, we're glad to have you on here. My sister's name is Elena. All right. Back to the page. What's the value prop? You got 15 seconds. Tell me. Value prop. 15 seconds. 14 seconds. 10. Five, all right, your time's up. Tell me the value prop. What is the value prop of this page? While you're uh, struggling to get that to me, Paul says, see our mop. Don says 36 times better, all right? Uh, keep thinking. All right, all right, so I'm gonna come right over here and uh, I'm looking at no touch cleaning systems. Mops are perfect for painting restrooms and other hard surfaces with soils and contamination. It's hard for me to read, but they're horribly ineffective at removing them. So he's appealing, the marketer, he or she, is appealing to a real problem. It's available in a variety of models and each machine combines automatic chemical metering and injection, an indoor pressure washer and a powerful wet vacuum. Now, Paul, I do wanna look at the page before I critique this because there's something missing and if it's not on the rest of the page, it needs to be up here. So take me to the, Paul's gonna click through and take us to the page. You can click on the link Paul put in there, but I will tell you before we even go there, while he's looking at that, we have an image of a bathroom which might make some sense but not much, because I can't really see the mop and I don't know what that image is trying to tell me. It's not doing the heavy lifting it does. And one of the greatest places for waste on the internet is our imagery. We stick in clip art, we throw stuff in the back end, we put a smiling face and none of it really helps us communicate our offer. Now, Paul, if you have, when you have the balance of that page, pull it up. If you don't, I'm just gonna keep going. All right, while he's doing that, we now have paragraphs of white on black. It's hard to read, it's too small, and it's too long a paragraph. There is no eye path through that, and I'm not gonna read all that unless you give me a more compelling reason. So the page is lacking a good headline. No touch cleaning systems. That is not a statement. The headline should be a statement. It should have a subheader. And the no touch cleaning systems helps me know something. I'm still not sure what it is. I mean, that could be a mop, that could be an um, that could be a vacuum, that could be a set of wipes, that could be a, 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 a fluid that I pour. It could be many things. It's not clear. It's not communicating a complete thought. It's the title. It's not a headline. I need a header. I need a subheader that draws me into the text below. I need a very short paragraph, probably not more than three and a half lines. I need bold font in the paragraph. I need it on a background that I can read, which means not white on black, especially with an image behind it. And it means thicker, easier to read font. And, uh, and then I have a button which has see no touch, 
see no touch cleaning system. Not a bad, not a bad words on there. It'll click them through, and I think that's the right idea. But again, I don't know what happens when I click that button. And, and why would I have them click to see them? Why wouldn't they see them right here on this page? Why do you want them to click and go somewhere else? You got a whole page to communicate to them now and communicate it visually. Scroll down the page, Paul. All right. Now, you see these pictures up here? That needs to be near the top of the page. Perhaps one of them right up there on the left-hand side where I get a sense of what I'm looking at. And then less text communicating. Now I see something about what it is. In fact, if I was designing the page, I would literally, I've, I've seen Convergent Lift over and over again doing this. I would have the system and I would have lines diagramming, explaining all the cool things about it. And I'd have good text there and then I'd take them to an interim commitment step. I don't know if that's lead gen uh, or it's e-commerce without going through the site. But I would use a image that visually communicated the value proposition of this unique device. And for anyone joining us who has some sort of specialized faucet, I talked to someone like that, or other specialized item that you want people to purchase, use your image to convey the value proposition all by itself. Years ago I had a project with uh, Encyclopedia Britannica and they just had a picture. We turned the picture into a comprehensive image that not only explained visually, but had a strong, powerful caption. We've gotten away from captions. They're not trendy or cool. Be done with trendy or cool. You can have a nice design and communicate better, and if you're trying to follow what everybody else is doing on the internet, you're just participating in pooled ignorance. You need to be rich with meaning, clarity, as fast as possible. So I would have an image, diagram, caption, clear explanation of the value proposition, all that I would have here. I would not make them draw all the way down to the bottom of that page. Look how long that paragraph is under how Kyvac no touch cleaning works. It's too long, it should be broken into bullet points, making it easy for people to absorb. Now, I will tell you this, it's better than the last page because it does communicate a value proposition in some way. There's real potential in this page, but you're making it too much work for me. Okay. You guys, are, uh, you guys are doing good. You ready to go to the next one? All right. Value prop. 30 seconds. Tell me what it is. Don't confuse the model with the value prop. All right. Tell me what you got. What have you got? Learn your, learn your kids to code, someone says. Uh, online coding course, start coding immediately. That, none of that's value prop, guys. It doesn't answer why I should choose you over everyone else. What this page is doing is half the job, and it's doing the half the job really well. Could do it better, but it's doing it really well. The images communicate something. They communicate fun. They communicate, you know, that it's, it's, it's targeted, slanted, expressly developed for young people for kids. It does that well. Uh, the, the first half of the job is being done good on this page, but the most important part is not being done at all, and that's where you get in trouble. Somebody tell me what it's doing right. I want to hear that part. What's the main thing it's doing right? Based on the last two critiques, what are you seeing? What is it doing right? Philippe says it's an app development course for kids. Absolutely. It's telling me what it is really clearly. Now, there may not be a lot of app development courses for kids. And so this page may be doing a fairly good job in the market, but the problem is you haven't given me one reason why, now that I see what it is I can do with you, why I should do it with you rather than any of your competitors. Now, that may be somewhere on the page, but you're too far down the page already without touching that piece of information. It's got to be much clearer, very fast, what's special about your group. Were you the first to develop this? Was it developed by a specialized authority that everyone recognizes? Is it taught in a way that you can't get anywhere else? Does it have the highest performance of any other course based on some study? Are there any major authorities whom I respect who recommend this course? What can you do to help me realize you have the best answer for my needs? Let's assume I I'm a parent with a child who I want to put in a course like this. My kids went to school in our lab. They, 
my director of sciences taught them math. And they, they grew up in our place. And so I would have been interested in that development for kids. But why, f why am I interested in buying it from you? Until you answer that, this page isn't working right. Now, if you are not someone familiar with our work, you've got to see our study on the value proposition. But I will tell you this, uh, you can watch that and learn, and learn how to tune the force up. It's free, uh, it's on YouTube Live, and there's also a, a certification class in it. But ultimately, by learning how to measure the force of a value prop, you can tune the force and make it powerful. This one doesn't have one. Never confuse the business model with a value proposition. All right? Is that making sense to you? Any questions for me? All right? Anybody looking at this have a question they want to ask? I'm going to give you a moment to do that. While I'm watching to see if a question come in, let me just point this out to you. We have four or five seats left for the whole balance of the year in one of our intensives where we spend a month preparing, then two days together, that's with me and our scientists, redoing your pages and discovering where the low-hanging fruit is. That's a quick win intensive, and it lasts, it lasts, uh, Basically, we, we spend 30 days in prep, we spend two intense days together, all in the same place, working really hard, and then we do follow-up for the next 30 to 60 days, making certain you get all the changes made properly and that you're getting results. If you're interested in that, it's not very expensive because we have the big expensive programs from people, you know, that in our research partnership program, and those can be a million dollars a month, and this is a few thousand dollars depending on what you do. Check it out. If you're interested in it, get back with us and we'll see. We only have four seats left. But we would be taking a page like this and, and completely rethinking it using the methodology. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I want to take you to uh, another page. Did I have any questions come in? What do you think about new to our website? Watch our video. I, I, I would, uh, Dave, Dave asked that question. It would depend, Dave, on what else is being communicated. Like, I need to know enough uh, before I'm ready to watch a video, and it may be the video communicates something about the value prop, but guess what? Never rely on the video. Some people aren't going to watch it. Make certain the words on the page say it. If the right words were there, Dave, it might be stronger. Right now, I don't think it's that strong. All right, I'm going to move on to the, to the next one. Okay, team, some of the people who have submitted these pages are with us right now, because these were all submitted this morning. Let's help them. We, we really appreciate you submitting them, and we're trying to use your pages to teach everyone transferable principles, but especially want to help you. If you're one of those people whose pages we've reviewed, and you want to make a few changes uh, and get some feedback, connect with us. We may be able to give you a quick feedback or, or get to one of these intensives where we can spend two days working hard on it together. All right, now, I'm going to look at this one. Value prop, real quick, fast. Give it to me. What is it? Can't read the text in the busy photo. What is it with us these days? Listen, clarity trumps persuasion. You're trying, to, you're trying to persuade me, but I need clarity. And I don't get clarity when you hide the message by, by making it fuzzy and hard to read and putting it over the piece of, 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 an, of an image. You've got it cursive written over, I think it's a bunch of banana chips in the shape of a heart. And that's just too hard for me to read, so I just move on. You're not the only answer out there. I just move on. Everybody's doing that. Your bounce rate may be very high here. Let's take a look again. Let's assume you solved all that. Well, get dehydrated fruits and fruit ribbons from Earlville Pondicherry. Is that a brand or a location? It's a location. All right. Discover tasty, all-natural, nutritious snacks. Okay, I want to help you. If, you're, if you've joined us, I'm so glad that you, you have. Uh, but again, I'm going to assume the, the, I have to, yes. This is Moose Little Offenders. Okay. All right. This may be Moose. Moose, if that's you, awesome. Glad to have you. And uh, we want to help you. So let's begin. Does anybody see, there are four things, I've taught this in the past, that power our analysis of this value proposition. I'm going to look for a, I'm going to look for a marker and put this on the board for you, okay? The first one is this. I have to understand it. If I don't understand it, then I can't do the next thing. I can't believe it. How can you believe something that you don't understand? So first I need to understand your value prop. Can I understand your value prop from this? No, I cannot. There's nothing for me to believe. Even if I believe you have tasty, all-natural, nutritious snacks, guess what? So does the local Jiffy store. 
Yeah, they have them too. Now they do. And so does Publix in Florida and Winn-Dixie and Inglis in, in uh, North Carolina and all these other places. What is it that I'm supposed to believe that's going to actually convince me to become a customer? I don't know. But first I have to understand it. Now, this is a foundation. Then I have to believe it. So the answer to that question, let's suppose you give me one right now for this site. And Moose, if you're on here, tell us what your value prop is. But let's suppose it's communicated clearly. Then I can understand it. And then I can believe it. But right now I don't even understand it. So you're not even getting off the ground with your answer. I've got to understand it. I've got to believe it. And then I've got to conclude two more things. One is, and this, think of this as almost a foundation. This is almost the foundation for what you're trying to accomplish, okay? And if you, if you get the foundation right, then you can build on that. So with that foundation, I got to get two more conclusions, and that is this. And I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll change this. And I've taught this before. I've taught you that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I understand it and I believe it and I don't conclude the other two, but you'll never conclude the other two unless you first understand it and then believe it. The first one is, I can't get this anywhere else. If I can, why should I take it from you? Now, it might be you can get it, I, when I say get this, I mean exactly the same way, the same price, the same offer. If you have a lower price than anybody, then, then, then I can't get it like this anywhere else. I mean the entire experience, from price to the quality of the offering. But it's gotta be something I can detect beforehand so I can believe it. I can't get it anywhere else, and I want. I want it. Now, if you get me to conclude that, A, this is what I want and I can't get anywhere else, then what do I do? I buy from you. If I'm gonna buy it all, I buy from you. But before you get me there, I've gotta understand it and I've gotta believe it. So look at the page again. Is there anything here to believe? No, not really. Discover tasty all natural and delicious smokes. That's not even telling me anything to believe. That's telling me something to do. And I can do that right now. I can walk out of the studio, down the street, and go discover some all-natural nutritious snacks. Get dehydrated fruits and fruit ribbons. Okay. I can do that. I can go do that right now, too. But I'm not getting it from you. And this business about Oroville and Pondicherry, it, India, wherever it is, maybe there's something unique about that location that makes it very desirable, but most of us do not care. Most of us do not care. Now, again, I don't know the context there, but I do know this. The whole top of this page is, is, is failing to do its primary job, which is to tell me what it is and tell me why I should get it from you. You follow that so far? All right. Now, let's move to the next one. We have already blasted through 45 minutes. Uh, I hope uh, you're getting value that you can apply to your own pages. I would summarize for you today the critiques very quickly before I look at the next one, and I'll just tell you what they are. Number one, I've got to be able to understand it, and I can't understand it when you put text poorly across an image or a background that makes it hard to read, when you use all fonts, when you use too long of paragraphs, or when you don't say it at all. In all of those cases, the page fails. If I don't understand it, I can't believe it. Now, then you've got to learn how to say it in a way that I will believe. And people are strange about these things. See this study right here? Now, if I were to read it, it would sound like the most boring study. I mean, honestly, it's so boring. Well, it's, I'll give you a sample of it. This is not the study I want. This is the Coke study. Um, uh, it says, Coke delivered. Uh, here it is. Following neutral flash of light, significant activations P0.001 uncorrected were found bilaterally in the hippocampus, MNI cortis, uh, dash 24, dash 24, dash 20, and 20, dash 20, dash 16 in the left, and on it goes. Uh, cortex, MNI coordinates, midbrain coordinates. This study is, uh, is for academics. I had two that I presented. I'll just tell you what the other one was. They produced a phony article written by phony scientists that said watching TV improves young people's ability to do math. They made it very convincing sounding, and they showed it to two groups of people. The first group saw the study, laid out very clearly, uh, and it had some pictures, but it was uh, just a control. In the treatment, they put a picture of one of these things right here, and you can barely see it, I'm just gonna hold it up, of a brain scan. And uh, you've all seen these images. I'm sure on the camera right now, it's very hard to read, but they saw a picture of a brain scan. So the same study, no change in the words, nothing. And they put the brain scan image. Just the picture of the brain scan 
caused people, when they surveyed them afterwards, to say, "How do you believe this study? Do you trust its findings? I don't have the study in front of me, but I believe the number was over 40%. More people believed in the study with a simple picture of a brain scan. So, here is the magic moment of our time together. For all of you people who want to get more people to believe your offer, all of you go put a brain scan on the top of your page and we'll see an uh, increase in conversion. I'm, I'm teasing you, please don't do that. But it does share something with you. It's not reality, it's perception. Now, in reality, the offer should be honest and the claims should be honest. But even if they are, it doesn't mean people will believe them. Being honest is not a guarantee that you'll be believed. And so, you've got to do something for people to understand and believe and then conclude they can't get anywhere else like this and they want it. Let's go to another page, all right? Here we are. Vable or Vablet, I don't have any idea. It's French, it's English, I'm not sure. The most innovative and easy to deploy sales engagement solution for. Does anybody see the problem underneath that? Somebody tell me what the problem is. Uh, this page is doing a better job, by the way. But what is the problem that's uh, apparent that we just talked about, what, 60 seconds ago? Yep, can't read, Ari. All that yellow or whatever that color is on white is lost, and it's the most important thing they're saying. Instead, I read the headline, I scan past that, and my eyes will shoot right and see the image because it will capture my attention. In, you know, our attention is based on, classically, it's based on relevant factors. You know, no color and then a place with color will draw attention. If everything's big, it doesn't matter. If everything's colored, it doesn't matter. But when there's a relative difference, it does. And right now, I can't read that very good, although when I cut to the right, I see a picture. Now, I don't know if that picture is doing the work it should do. I turn it into a diagram with arrows, explaining. It's just a picture of a computer. It's really not explaining anything. You could do better to use the image to communicate the value proposition. But the most important thing you could do is, is make this easier to read. Now, there is the attempt to achieve the only factor, the most innovative and easy to deploy sales engagement solution. Where's my brain picture? What is the problem with that statement? Are you, would you agree with me about this? They've, they're, they're expressing a value proposition. Would everybody see that? And what is their value proposition? Let's, 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 let's play question and answer. Here's the question. If I'm the ideal customer, why should I purchase this solution uh, for my sales engagement rather than any other? And the answer is because we're the most innovative and easy to deploy. Now, that is the beginning of an answer, but it's terribly weak. You say, what do you mean it's terribly weak? Well, I do understand that you have an answer. I just don't have enough reason to believe your answer because you're using words that are qualitative, not quantitative. You haven't told me, for instance, that in a study, uh, you know, people were up and running, a study done by X, people were up and running within 24 hours of account activation. Or that, you know, in a, some PC magazine or some sales magazine, you were ranked number one for these reasons, X, Y, and Z. Or you have an entirely different way you approach this that is so different than everyone else's, it allows you to provide a much better solution. And here, so you get to the why. What is it you do differently? Everybody's is the most innovative and easiest to deploy. Everybody says the same thing. Why should your voice be heard above the others? Now, I want to tell you, I didn't plan the order of these. Paul just put them in and I'm doing this live, but this comes at just the right time because here is an attempt to answer that question. Here is an attempt to communicate a value proposition, but it's not a strong attempt. Better than nothing, but not strong enough. Use your image and use all of those, uh, use that space at the top. And frankly, I don't think I would just talk about version control, enhanced training, uh, those are things that come later in the communication. It's the right idea, bullet points and a headline. And a headline that has an only factor. But it, it's, it's the wrong bullet points. Right now I need to know what makes this different than everybody else's. What makes this easier and more innovative? Because those are just features. And most of the programs will have the same feature. And you say, well, some don't. Yeah, but I don't know that. And this is not the place to try and communicate that. First you gotta get me engaged. And if that's really true, then give me a comparison chart that shows me how yours is superior to all the others. Make it crystal clear and then I'll realize that. Also, make certain sure you're telling me the truth. If it's not the most innovative, if it's not the easiest to deploy, 
we got a completely different problem. You're going to fail the trust trial, and you're going to lose uh, way more than you gain by a temporary sale. All right. Is this making sense to everybody? Uh, oh, wait. Is this Paul? Paul, is this your page? I see you asked a question. If we say it's rated by Aragon. If that's the case, Paul, yes, I would use the research firm. I would link to it, and, uh, and I would help people to do this. I did this with Verizon. Um, with a root metric study that, that really demonstrated they had the greatest coverage. And I'm not a, a big Verizon fan, but they had the best coverage at the time and it was done by independent studies and it changed uh, the trajectory in sales by communicating that properly. All right, but let's keep going. And Paul, uh, listen, you know, if we can get with you on this page, we'll, we'll do more. But I would tell you, is this helping you right now? You get a sense of what you need to do there? Give me the why you can say that. Give me the reason that claim is true and you're starting to hook me. All right. Uh, and Shannon says something. To be fair, it's always hard for software companies to find images to support product value props. Screenshots are often used, but hard to interpret. What's the best alternative? Good question. Um, I think when you, if you use a screenshot, draw a diagram arrow explaining what those features do in terms of benefit for me. Show me how this will save me 40% of the time it normally takes to enter my data and, and hook to that feature. That's one way. And then support it with a video that is not all the dross and hype and nonsense, but just very clearly explaining all the unique pieces about this in a way that's easy for me to understand. That's a second way. Uh, a third way is to get other people to talk about the specific features that, you're, that, that have made a difference and saved them energy or effort and, and quote them, not just vague testimonials. Don't just blanket your site with testimonials. No one believes them anyway. But very specific testimonials that you guide people into about the specific unique benefits that make your offering the best. All right. And, uh, but like that image right there, you could use a microscopic blow up like a, like a, like a circle that blows up a piece of that screenshot with a, with a diagram note that says X, it does this for you and it does Y for you. Do it right, you'll intrigue me. You just got to get me intrigued enough to get deeper into the page where you can fully explain what works. Okay? All right. Now, I want to go to uh, another one. Uh, this may be, I don't know how many more we'll be able to do, so let's just go to this one quickly. All right, we have five minutes left. Let's use it. Let's not waste it. If you're with me, I'm going to use all five minutes as, as densely as I can. Um, oh, I like this. New heavy series lure. Okay. What's wrong with that headline? Somebody tell me. We got five minutes. Make it fast. What's wrong with a new heavy series, uh, series lure? Same thing I began with at the beginning. The key to transformative marketing is to transform marketer. And the marketer who wrote that headline is looking at the page through marketer eyes instead of customer eyes. As a customer, why do I care that you have a new heavy series lure? What difference does that make to me? Why waste the first thing you say to me on a piece of information that doesn't mean anything? There's lures everywhere. Half ounce, lead weight, VCM black nickel hooks. There is nothing here but a description. I could have put a mop on there and said new heavy series mop. And then I could have said long reinforced handle, you know, double tread strands and so on. Big deal. What does that do for me? How am I going to catch more fish with that lure? Why is that the best choice for me? What? None of that's being communicated. There's nothing on the page. Now, if I'm already familiar with the lure, and I'm sure you have customers that are, that's good. But what about the rest of us? I fish all the time, by the way. And I, and I don't see anything in here that would compel me. Remember, at the beginning, I've got to understand. I don't know what there is to believe. Here's what I believe. Here's what I understand. Here's what I believe. You have a new lure. Cool. Nice to meet you. I'll carry on. That doesn't get the job done. I got to give me something, say something clearly that I can believe so that I, I, I want it and I realize I can't get it anywhere else. Then you drive me into the funnel deeper where you can engage me and turn me into a trusting customer. All right? There is a title on there. I do know what you're trying to sell. Congratulations on that. In e-commerce, we see that regularly. It's pretty clear what you're doing here. You can buy stuff. I have no reason to buy it, though. And that's where it's not doing the work it should do. All right. And somebody, Larry says, I don't know why heavy is important. Uh, I suppose it's for depth, Larry. Uh, it, as a fisherman, it may get you down deeper when you reel it. I'm not certain, but again, that's a valuable point. I, who knows? And, uh, and, uh, and so uh, somebody says it doesn't get caught to your finger or your ear. Boy, I've seen that treble hooks buried in the shoulder. It's not fun. All right. I really need your feedback today. 
we did this differently. We spent all of our time on live ops. So many of you have been asking for this that we decided to do it. And in it, we focused on the top of the page and we focused on the value proposition. If you want to get the greatest possible traction in your pre-Christmas marketing efforts, get your value proposition crystal clear. And it doesn't matter whether it's lead gen, whether it's publishing, or whether it's e-commerce. By the way, e-commerce, don't give me just the product value prop. Why should I buy it from your store? Otherwise, I'll just go to Amazon and get it. You've got to learn how to communicate on your category pages and on your product pages, your value prop. If you're a technical specialist that Amazon doesn't have and so you can help me buy that product and make certain I'm getting the right specifications and getting exactly what I need, there's a reason. If you're the only one that has it, there's a reason, but you're probably not. And so you've got to learn how to communicate that value prop. In retail, uh, e-commerce, just as much as you would in a service offering, professional services, you know, SaaS fr framework or, or a media publishing subscription, etc. Okay, what are you going to learn from today? In the first four inches of your page, I got to know what it is I can do and why I should do it with you. And if you don't communicate it clearly, I can't believe it. If you communicate clearly and I don't believe it, might as well not have even wasted a dollar to get me to your page because it's not doing you any good. I got I to gotta believe it, but to believe it, I got to understand it. If I understand it and believe it, then give me something to believe so that I conclude I want it and I can't get it anywhere else. Thank you very much. For those of you that would like to see Paul in the next program, send some alcohol to us and we'll make sure that uh, he's properly uh, lubricated before he begins uh, the next session. Uh, we would love to meet some of you. If you're able to get to a quick win intensive, come to us and spend time with me personally and our staff and our scientists and we'll work with you and build your pages up. Reach out to us. Thank you for today. Thank you for your trust. More to come.